February 13th, 2024. This is a regular meeting of the Commission, and we will start with a Pledge of Allegiance led by mm -hmm. Mr. Johnson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. okay, roll call. Commissioner Elliott. Present. Commissioner Grace. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Present. Commissioner Rousseau. Here. Commissioner Weinstein. Here. Chair Pro Tem Question. Here. And Chair Firestein is here as well. So uh, let's see. Well, next item is special presentations, which we don't have any, except I have heard that. Uh, Andy Hall would has something that he would like to share in terms of uh, um, the role of committees and commissions in the city, and it seems like it would fit within the communications part, the features parks and recreation director report. So, would it be possible for somebody to move to move to move that item to the front of the agenda, just so we can do this? And have I'll, it here. Andy, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Yeah. Commissioners, thank you for allowing me to just be here tonight. I've been making the rounds of going to all the different boards and committees and commissions because we've created a few new ones this year. And so they've asked me to just kind of go around and make sure that first to give you greetings from the city council and, and they want to thank you for your service. As you know, it's very difficult for them to come as a group. Uh, that would have to be noticed as a meeting of the city council. So um, they asked me to just make sure that I get a chance to uh, meet with the different committees and commissions. I was talking to one of our department heads tonight, and in addition to doing the, the packets every other week for the city council, they have six committees and commissions that, that their department oversees. And so it's just, it's um, there are a lot of people involved in making this city great, and you guys are a big part of that as well. Um, Specifically to the beach parks and recreation, I think that you know, um, second to none for a community this size, the recreation amenities and, the, and the, the investment that our community has made. Is that too? Is it? Yeah, I can there's a little bit feedback. We're almost we're almost into our new um, digs here. They're getting very close to having things fixed up. Anyway, what I was what I was hoping to share with you is that I think that that this committee is so important because I think you know that the emphasis that our residents have invested in the recreation programs of this city is just amazing. Um, most cities our size would be really, really just tickled to have something like Steve Park. But we have Steve Park. We have Vista Hermosa Park. We have Max Bird Park. We have two swimming pools. Most cities would just love to have a swimming pool. We have two of them. And just the investment and the importance that our city has placed on quality of life and, and what recreation means to this community has been great. And, and lots of times beach cities kind of ignore that. It's like, oh, you know, we got the beach, we got the sand, we don't really need to invest in, in some of these other things, and, and our city has done that. So really appreciate the work that you guys do, the recommendations that you make to the city council. I want you to know they take it serious. Um, the city council has had to deal with uh, a lot of different things this year that has been challenging to them, things like district elections and, and some things that seem to um, take a lot of their time and, and a lot of their meetings, but I know when I get a chance to brief with them and talk to them, uh, there is nothing more than beach parks and recreation. Uh, we have a world-class golf course. Uh, we have world-class amenities everywhere you look. Um, that doesn't even include our community center. When you go look at some of the facilities we have, it's just remarkable. So first, I want to, do want to thank Samantha and her crew. I think that they get overlooked a lot. They, none of that happens by accident. Is it going to be better? I'm not sure. I'm going to switch it up. Um, uh, maybe I'll sound a little less like I'm from Wyoming in this one. <laughs> I hate, it's really weird to hear your voice behind you because you can hear what you really sound like. And, but I haven't thrown out any y'alls or critics or I reckon yet. So. <laughs> But anyway, I, I, I do appreciate Samantha and what she does. Um, I, I think that's a thankless job. I don't think people know how 
how much time goes into um, creating these recreational programs and whatnot. But everybody recognizes when it rains and the, and the fields are wet and their kids can't go out and play. <laughs> kids can't go out. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> kids can't go out and play softball or baseball or anything else. Um, and so we really appreciate what Smith and what her crew does. But they, they really need this group, they need the recommendations because, like I said, the city council gets distracted by so many things that are happening in the city. We can get distracted with homelessness, or we can get distracted with creating council districts, or we can get distracted with cell towers, or some of the things that have been very, very volatile lately. And so the importance of keeping a focus on what's happening with what has been a very large investment by the residents and recreation is a really important responsibility of this, of this committee. Um, this committee has done a, an amazing job with one thing, and I, and I want to thank you for that. Um, a lot of our committees kind of, kind of slip into providing direction to staff, saying, you've got to go do this, you've got to go do this. Really, the role of committees is to provide recommendations to the council to then provide direction to staff. And then they tell me, and I tell staff, and that's how that works. This committee has always been really, really good about, about telling Samantha, hey, can you report this to the city council, see if we can get direction on that. City council provides direction. This committee does that very, very well. So I wanted to thank you. I will tell you that not all committees <laughs> operate that way. Uh, sometimes they slip into uh, providing direction, and that's very, very difficult for staff because if it's not consistent with something the city council wants to do, staff's in a very, very awkward spot. So really appreciate the fact that you guys recognize that. Um, but I, did, I know you've got a lot of things to do. You'd rather be home with your families than hearing from me. So uh, what I really wanted to do is make sure that I was here and give you guys an opportunity once or twice a year to be able to ask questions about what's going on in the community, what's happening, um, both in recreation and perhaps outside. Um, I, I will answer to the extent I can. We certainly don't want to get too far into discussions on things that aren't on your agenda. We don't want to have any kind of a Brown Act situation. But sometimes uh, short answers to questions you might have are, are very appropriate. So I'll leave it at that. Quick question. Casa Romantica, T Street, Bri T Street Bridge. Which way? Which is the more priority? Oh, wow. No. Um, I just went right for it. <laughs> so I thought you were going to ask for an update on what's happening at Casa Romantica and the slope. Okay. Um, not, not, you know, what what uses should be. So I probably have to drill down to your question a little bit. In terms of what's happening at Castro Romantica, I don't know if you've had a chance to go out there. I'll ask Sam to provide you with a visual update because it's very, very interesting. What's happening is they're putting the tie backs into the hill right now. That hill will be very stable when it's done. It was very expensive, um, but it will be very stable when it's done. It won't look like that when it's done. A lot of people have asked us, is it going to be really steep like that? It will, it's just steep where the tiebacks are. Then they're actually going to bring the soil back in and put the slope back in and put plants on top of it. But then if we ever have another landslide, it'll be very superficial. It'll just be that topsoil. It won't be, it won't be large areas of, of soil that come down. The T Street Bridge has experienced... Um, we had a contractor that was going to go out and do some work on the T Street Bridge. Um, when the contractor got out there, we found out that the work was going to be more extensive than they thought. When they started looking at the rust and they started looking at what needed to be done. Oh, she said T Street. I said T. So I switched over to T Street. But but I give Mariposa in just a minute. So Yeah, can you finish with T Street? Because I have a question on T Street. So so um what happened on T Street was that there's there's kind of a thing in the procure not kind of. There's been litigation on the procurement code that if your bid changes by more than 19.2%, I don't know why that's the number, but if your bid changes by more than 19.2%, you need to rebid the project. So when they came in with the change order and they said, there's a lot more damage to T Street than we thought there was, we needed to rebid that project. So they've changed the project. Um, I, I, it's been rebid. I don't know if that contract has been let yet. It's close. It's close, because I know I've seen the bids come in. Mm -hmm. So they'll be refinishing that bridge, and so T Street will get a facelift. I know people are worried about the rust. The structure of the bridge is still solid. It does have a lot of rust. It does need to be repower coated and whatnot, but, okay. but that's what's happening with T Street. Thank you. Um, as far as Casa Romantica and the use, um, recently the Casa Romantica has invited the mayor and the city manager to be ex officio members in their, at, at their meetings. 
So we'll have a little bit more input about that. I, I know that the current city council um, is dedicated to having the Casa Romantica as well as the Old Hanson Beach Club be more open to the public, to public events. That, that, you know, it's owned by the residents. They want to make sure that there's more access to those particular structures by the, by the community. So that's one of the priorities. There was a couple of questions on T Street before we go to Mariposa. So sorry. Yeah, no, I was just going to ask the question about T Street because one of the things we noticed right when all this was happening with Mariposa was how bad T Street looked. Right. And I think it, it kind of came to the forefront because it was like, oh, we have another bridge, and oh my gosh, it's cracking, and it's this, it's that. So, so thanks for the information. Yeah, I should say there's two other bridges also, Riviera and Montalvo. And they just they were just approved in the last council meeting to have those repower coded as well. So all those bridges are experiencing some wear and some rust and some they're great. And so all, all of those bridges are being updated. So, right. uh, so okay. oh, sorry. quick question. Um, since we're still talking about Casa Romanica, um, if that process is completed successfully and looks like it's going to be a long-term fix, will they start looking at some of the other bluff failures to do the same thing with, potentially? Yeah, um, the real challenge with a lot of the bluff in San Clemente is that it's privately owned property. So the difference with Castro Romantica is it's owned by the city. And so we had, well we didn't, it was a struggle. Um, it has really, by the way, it has really challenged us with our capital improvements this year. There's going to be a big cutback on the number of projects we can do this year uh, because we had to move essentially $8 million out of projects to do Casa Romantica. But we at least had the resources to be able to do that. Most landowners would make it, it would be very difficult to put an $8 million fix for a $4 million home. So a lot of that private property, we're going to have to find other ways uh, to do that. And I, I don't know what those are. It's very, very difficult. So we cannot give, it's called, you know, you've heard it before, gift of public funds. We can't give public funds to an individual homeowner to help them with their property because essentially I'm taking your money and giving it to a different homeowner. And that's, that's something government can't do. It's, it's a big worry. And so what we're doing is, uh, you'll see at the next council meeting, we're bringing forth, we have some ordinances in place, but they're, they're kind of throughout our codes. We have combined all the ordinances we have for bluff protection, and we put them into one pamphlet, and we're going to distribute that for all of the bluff properties. No irrigation in your backyards. That's been, that's been in place for a long time, but we go out there and we notice people have started to plant lawns, and they're starting to water lawns. Um, you, you cannot have drainage. All the drainage needs to come to the street. Um, at the Mariposa Bridge, we noticed that there were three private drainage um, uh, pipes that are going down over the hillside. So we're going to have to start, uh, the, I don't want to be the heavy, but the city needs to probably start to enforce those, those bluff regulations a little bit more than we have in the past. And although they'll, they'll think we're being mean, I think we're doing it to protect them, maybe protect them from themselves. So. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the Mariposa Bridge. So we have a list of CIP projects um, in front of us tonight, and I thought I might see the, something about the Mariposa Bridge on that list, and I don't. Is that, is that something you would see need us to put? I, I don't think you would need us to put us put it on a CIP list, but I just want to make sure that if you need us to, it's there somewhere. And I don't know how we would even get an estimate of what that would cost. But. Sure, the Mariposa Bridge is is actually in the railroad right of way. And so we have a lease from the railroad for the, for the Mariposa Bridge. And um, when the landslide came down, it came off of private property. And so right now we are working with our insurance company, who is working with their insurance company. Uh, we hope that some or all of the costs associated with the Mariposa Bridge will be handled through somebody's insurance company. Um, the challenge is that every single day, I think you probably heard this, not just in Talega and other places, they're losing their fire insurance. Uh -huh. Most of the homes along the bluff, I'm sorry, I, I didn't, it may be too soon to talk about it, I apologize. Um, but a lot of the homeowners along the bluff have lost their, their homeowner's insurance as well, and they, they can't insure their homes. So um, we're not sure where this particular HOA stands. The nice thing is that it does, they do have an HOA, which, which tells us maybe there's some insurance involved there. So we do plan to replace it. I will tell you the last I've heard, they keep trying to do what we did at Castro Romantica. Remember we kept putting dirt back up on the hillside and it'd slide down. We put it up and it'd slide down. 
Uh, the railroad has tried to do that several times and keeps sliding down. They have made the determination that they're going to have to put a retaining wall in, in that section of, of their right of way. So they're going to be doing that in the relative near future. I have a question. How, where is their right of way? From the center of the track going up that hill? I've never been able to figure out where the right of way is. So in that particular part of the railroad, um, from the center of the railroad, there's an easement 50 feet either from the center line either way. So it's 50 feet. 50 either. feet. So it's 100 feet total. 100 feet, yes, 50 feet from the center. And then there's a, a 20 foot right of way that the city owns. And that's, an, I think it was an old drainage pipe that was in there. And then the rest of all the right up the hillside is privately owned property. So almost all the hillside itself is private property. What does BNSF plan on doing to protect their tracks? They're obviously a big participant here, right? Yeah, so BNSF has been able to run freight at night from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., I think, um, as long as it's less than 10 miles per hour and they have to go out and have someone take a look at it. They haven't been able to do that the last couple of days, um, and so they're that's millions of dollars a day for them not to be able to run the freight on that railroad. Now, there's a whole bunch of people saying, well, we should bury the, the rail lines. But that will only cost, I don't know, a few tens of billions. I don't know, several billion dollars. Uh, what we're really trying, I think, as a city to, to try and get people to think about is for probably less than one billion, I would think for maybe even five or six hundred million, we should be able to do, so, so Castle Romantica cost us $8 million. You should be able to do most of that bluff area all through San Clemente for a few hundred million dollars. And you should be able to put sand on the beach to protect the revetment from the railroad for another couple hundred million dollars. So I would think for less than a billion dollars, the federal government can come in and protect that railway. That's what I'd like to see the, the federal government get behind. I'd like to see our community get behind. I think it protects us, it protects the railroad. But I keep hearing this, oh, we should move those tracks and we should bury them under I-5. I can't even count the billions of dollars that would take. I think for a lot fewer billion and for maybe a few hundred million, we could probably stabilize the railroad through San Clemente and at the same time protect the community. So it just seems to me that that's a lot better approach than burying the railroads. You know? Where's the DOD on this? It, th that, is, that is a part of the Defense Department is the rail access to Camp Pendleton. Um, DOD will never take a political stance, so they will, every time you ask them, they say, we, we do whatever the Commander-in-Chief tells us, and that's always their answer. So quietly, of course, they, they want to make sure that that railroad is accessible, but they will never take a political stance. Do they have any money? What's that? Do they have any money? It depends on my defense. Oh. But they buy bullets, you know, to buy trains, I don't know. Yeah, I. I don't know. It, most of the most of the use of that rail is private. It's owned by BNSF, uh, ran by MetroLink. So I don't know that military would contribute. I don't know. That's a good question. We should probably involve them at least. Any other questions? Uh, yes. Oh, Andy, yes. can you give us an update on um, the sand replenishment? Has that started again? Okay. <laughs> um, the information I'm going to give you is about an hour old, so it's probably completely dated and probably completely wrong. Um, the latest that we've heard is that, so what happened, I think a lot of people mis maybe misunderstood what happened. The, the project is between the Army Corps of Engineers and, a, and the contractor, Hanson. And so the city's just a beneficiary. We don't have anything to do with the contract. And so the contractor, uh, we have a borrow site that is just north of Oceanside. It's covered with about three feet of poverty, <coughs> and under it is about 20 million cubic yards of beach quality sand. One of the biggest deposits in all the West Coast. But you have to get through the cobble. And they knew that. The core samples are very clear, right? But they were taking the cobble off about six inches at a time instead of moving the cobble and going down to the sand. They didn't have that particular equipment, although the core samples made it clear that that's the equipment you probably need to have. Whatever. They unilaterally decided, we're pulling out. We're not doing this anymore. We're going to go do the other parts of the project. <coughs> and so
and the Army Corps kind of said, well, uh, and that so far the Army Corps keeps saying, well, <laughs> so we've been a little bit frustrated. But the latest, and you don't care about all that, I'll jump to what's happening today. What we're trying to do right now is to change the borrow site because the contractor has indicated that if we can change the borrow site, they'll get back here, they'll get into the sand immediately, and they'll get sand on our beach. The first place we looked was down off of Del Mar where they're doing the Solana Beach and the Encinitas uh, Beach Nourishment Projects right now. Um, that's probably a little bit smaller site than the one that they're using um, up off of Huntington Beach right now, which is, I think, called Sunset, Sun, Sunset Sea View. Something like that. I forget the name of the borrow site. Um, so we're trying to rapidly. Uh, I was on the phone as late as 10:30 last night. We're trying to get the approvals to do that as immediately as possible. So we're trying to do what happened over 20 years in about 20 days. Um, so we're trying to get the borrow site changed so that we can get sand on the beach this year. What we told them is it's less important for us to get sand on the beach this year than it is to get sand on the beach. And if it, happens to, if it happens next year, that's fine, but don't bring any more cobble. So even if it takes a little bit of time, we've been waiting 20 years. We'd rather wait and get good, high-quality sand on the beach than have you check a box and say, yeah, we're done with that project. The Army Corps agreed. Um, so they agreed that we're going to get 251,000 cubic yards of sand, not cobble. And so um, that's the latest, is we're trying to get approval to use a new borrow site. And that's not for the faint of heart to try and get through both CEQA and NEPA as quickly as we need to do it, but we're going to find a way. And if not, then we'll do it next year, but we're not putting more cobble on the beach. That's, that's the message. Uh, what's the shelf life of this replenishment if we have storms? So they anticipate that, well, that's kind of an interesting question. A lot of people have asked, why are you putting the sand between T Street and Linda Lane? That's where we already have sand. That's the only place we have sand on the beach. Well, they did a cost-benefit analysis and said, well, if we're going to put sand on the beach, let's put it where it will stay. So they anticipate by putting 251,000 cubic yards of sand on the beach that it will stay for five to six years. And then you need to replenish it for every five or six years for the next 50 years. And that's why it's a 50-year project. Um, just to put that into perspective, uh, everyone knows Solana Beach. It's much smaller, more kind of compact area. Their project is 700,000 cubic yards, so they, they're, they're putting basically 500,000 cubic more yards every six years than we are. Um, so I don't, I don't know how the Army Corps came up with that. It was 20 years ago. I, I, I don't know how they came up with those things. But you probably heard in the council meeting the other night this thing called SCOOP. Uh, we're trying to get an opportunistic sand permit that allows us to find sand for other parts of the beach that aren't part of the project, like North Beach, and like State Beach, and like you know, Pochi and everywhere else, so that we can get sand on all of our beaches. Um, problem is, that's all out of the city's pocket, and it's really expensive. Um, so um, the next six years, instead of paying 15%, we paid 15% of this year's uh, contribution for sand, we have to pay 50%. So our share will go up to $9 million. I can tell you right now, today, we don't have that. Uh, so the ocean protection fee has expired. We're going to have to ask the residents whether it's important enough to maybe look at that fee again or something, but we've got to find a way. Sand is expensive, but I think as long as we can find a way to dedicate the funds to that, I think the community wants sand on their beach. And we're going to, you know, we'll find out in, in a, matter of, a matter of time. Because right now, we just we don't have that, those kinds of resources. Thank you very much. You asked a question I didn't ask, answer, answer, and I apologize for that. I think you did. I, I was asking about Mariposa. Yeah, you were asking whether or not that you, you, we, oh. we need a recommendation to place yeah. that on the CIP. Um, I, I think it's important for the committee to prioritize your projects, what you really believe are important, um, between what happened at um, Casa Romantica and what we heard today about the increase in our sheriff's contract. Um, I think it's going to be important that we truly prioritize um, the CIPs. I think, I think we're going to have less discretionary spending for a couple of years until we catch up with the new sheriff's contract um, before we can just do a lot of projects. The other thing is we always put more projects on the list than we can get done. So I would say be, be realistic. Uh, we can probably I mean, beach parts and recreation projects take 
three or four months to complete, so we could probably get three or four of them done, and we seem to get 12 of them on the list, and, and then people are disappointed because we don't get them done. So I would encourage you to, to be um, not frugal, but careful about the amount of, of items we, we forward to the council. Do we have a number? Do you have a number that we need to hit for our CIP? You know, I don't. I don't know that it's a number. What I would say is if there's a big project that's a, a 5 or $10 million project, go after that one. If there is a series of projects that add up to 3 or $4 million, go for a series of projects. But, but um, I don't know that there's a number necessarily because they'll be thrown into the mix with other funding opportunities and things like roads. And, and um, a lot of things don't come out of the general fund. Water lines, sewer lines, you know, those are enterprise funds. Um, general fund projects are primarily going to be, um, Parks and Rec is probably the biggest place we spend money on our, and out of our general fund on, on CIP projects. So be a, between three and four million would be a reasonable that's, number? That's the kind of numbers you want to be looking at, where I think in the past they've been more 10, six. 10, 6, yeah, stuff like that. We're probably about half of where we've been, just because last year was just a tough year. And we'll recover, it will just take us a little bit of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate you guys and all you do, and I'll get out of here because no one likes But well, first, I'm not done with staff reports, and it's, it's a holiday, so I think uh, Laura's really mad at me, so I'm going to go up and get staff reports done. But I really appreciate the opportunity. I've tried to come a couple times a year as often as Sam will let me, but she hates it when I come because I talk too much. So. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Really Thank appreciate you guys, what you do. Please, Thank come you. back anytime. Thank Thanks you very much. Questions for the audience? Oh, <laughs> every time I come, you guys have usually have people here. This is, this is, this is awesome. This is a short meeting. This is weird. No, we love our publics. Come on. No, we do. Thanks, you guys. Have a great night. Thank Thanks, you. Andy. Nice to meet you. Uh, next item is approval. Oh, I'm sorry. Samantha, is there anything else under the uh, director report that we need to move forward? or? Um, I, we can circle back to it or I can cover it now. What's the preference of the commission? Mm -hmm. Why don't, we, why don't we do the rest where it comes in? Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, Thank you. We have nothing else for special presentations. Approval of minutes from December 12, 2023. Anybody have any comments on the minutes or a motion? I motion to accept the minutes. A second. Uh, a motion by Weinstein, second by Rousseau. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Oral communications. How many uh, speaker comment cards do we have, Debbie? <laughs> Too many. Huh? Too many to count. <laughs> it's Valentine's Day, people. <laughs> hey, Debbie, when it goes out for notice, when does the agenda go out? Did we get it? Or 30 days before, or what? When did it go out? It went out on. Um, it's it's you, the public's notified at the same time the commission is. Everybody gets the same notification. So it went on Friday, right? Friday is uh, Yes, I think that's when we did her agenda. Okay, current community activities and updates. Samantha, do you have anything there? I have PowerPoint. You have a PowerPoint? I'm very small. So, um, we, since last met, we hosted um, Sunsets with Santa. This was another, um, actually, I think this was our third year of doing this event. Um, another great turnout on the pier, um, and we saw several hundred people come down and enjoy Santa. The line was pretty long, so um, we know that Santa on the pier is really important, and we're going to look to add another date next year. Um, and then uh, coming up, We've got St. Clemente Day. This is the anniversary celebration of St. Clemente's Incorporation, always celebrated on the last Saturday of February by Council Resolution. Um, this event includes a fishing derby um, for kids on the pier from 9 to 9 to 11 a.m., not p.m. It's, uh, <laughs> well, it's, not it's a long, long day. <laughs> um, and then we also host free recreation swim for families at the Aquatic Center from 12 to 4 p.m. on that day as well. And then we also, um, ahead of our next meeting time, we'll host the Sensational Springtacular at Mr. Hermosa Sports Park on March 30th. And um, that includes a giant egg scramble. It's not really a hunt to call it a scramble because it's that. 
Um, and the Springtown Bunny will be there for photographs. And we've got um, Celebrating Camp Palooza, where we'll, we'll, we'll showcase all of our summer camps and our swim lessons and all of our summer programming with the public um, having the opportunity to meet our, our instructors and our staff teams this coming summer. Um, and we do also have um, the first day of spring and summer camp registration opens tomorrow, February 14th at 8 a.m. Um, it's a very important and popular day as parents um, dive into what their summer vacation plans look like and what their, what their programming looks like. So that is my update on events. Thank you. Any questions for Samantha? Thank you, Samantha. Uh, old business, there's nothing. New business, uh, item 6A, consideration of a policy, I'm sorry, consideration of a policy establishing guidelines for naming the city owned facilities. Samantha? Good evening. Um, this policy, I think, um, like the staff report kind of explains where we're at, but so that the commission's aware. Um, the sponsorship and funding subcommittee has worked um, pretty hard over the last year or so and just in the recent months to um, kind of fine-tune what their role is. And part of that conversation became we should, we should look to establish some policies, recommend policies to council on what would help us in seeking sponsorships and funding opportunities. And that um, grew into the establishment of a policy regarding naming rights of public spaces. Um, so the subcommittee um, put their heads together, um, looked at different um, cities around um, town or local cities around us, and came up with a policy that's included in the attachment that defines what the goal is, what the purpose is, um, and kind of the pathway to seeking sponsorship and naming rights, if you will. Um, so by no means was this all my effort. I do want to lend that um, thank you and the, to the support of the subcommittee. Um, but I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. I know that the subcommittee might have um, some opinions and want to opine as well on the process. Um, but again, this, this could go two ways. The, the commission could give feedback to the subcommittee. We could go back to the drawing board and come back at a later date. Um, we could look to refine policy as it is in draft form today and then take that forward to council um, or make no changes and take the entire uh, policy to council as well. Um, as it's summarized in the staff report, there is no official naming policy that we have um, in our naming and our policy and procedures handbook. There's kind of a guiding document that dates back to 1987 that gives a gauge on um, how things should be named if something comes up for consideration. That was um, the commission's recommendation. It never got to council for formal approval. Um, so this certainly leans into some of that, um, those findings from 1987, but also expands it and gives it a little bit more detail um, on how we, how we should pursue naming rights if that opportunity arises. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions if there are any or if the subcommittee wants to add to that. Questions? I have a question. So the quote private sector does a big deal about having facilities named by people who sponsor the facility. Um, in your review of this whole thing, what city have has any cities done that and have they been successful? So if I understand you're talking about if, if a large uh, private company comes in and wants to name one of our parks. Um, well, they name them. It would be by. It's always by. You know what I mean? It's sometimes. So it would be such and such park by. Right. Um, that, that's certainly an option. What the subcommittee looked to do was um, not, when it, when it came to potentially a large donation, um, we didn't want to put ourselves in a box um, of, of shying away from a large donation. I think if a, if a private business is going to come to the city and offer a substantial donation, we would want to have that flexibility to have the conversation. What's the dollar amount? What are they asking for? Um, to give some flexibility, and again, that, that would likely then come back to the commission again for review. That's part of this policy. Um, but the, the policy does take into consideration um, private or company donations, business donations for naming rights. There's no dollar threshold that we've attached to it, though. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. More 
question, Samantha. Have the other cities ever had a problem by naming a facility after somebody and then having an issue later on? And we only have one thing. We have we had the field of visibility here, I think it's named after somebody, I forget, we did that 30 years ago. Yeah. And then there's Max Berg and um, Steve. Steve and Steve, Steve. Harper. So, These are all very sort of neutral, obvious. Right, and the only other one is Leslie Park, um, which is kind of a small park, pocket park in San Clemente, South San Clemente. Um, we've never had an issue with, with naming something after somebody and then having to go backwards on it. Um, that hasn't come up in San Clemente's history. Um, certainly, I think other cities have had that, even nationally we've seen that um, over the last couple of years. Um, but that, so that hasn't impacted San Clemente. Um, we do get an option in here to look at uh, naming amenities versus entire parks, to your point, um, Vice Chair Pluskin, that, that uh, the conversation around Arley Waterman Field, um, that, that circulated, I think, in the 80s. And they, they wanted to name Vista Bahia, the entire park after Arley Waterman, and, and the commission at that time said, let's name the field. Um, so that option does still exist in this naming policy. Yeah, I was on the commission when we did that. Well, what we should say the one example we have in San Clemente of a commercial enterprise coming forward and getting naming rights would be Ralph Skate Park. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's absolutely right. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And, and even in uh, our discussions at the subcommittee, um, this has come up even in recent years with members of the public, Ralph's wasn't under any certain length of time for that name. So it's, it's come up recently as we're looking to expand, expand the skate park. Are we, are we committed to Ralph's? Not really. Um, they gave a one-time donation with not any certainties within that, at least in writing, that we can find. Um, so our goal going forward is, well, this is a naming policy. Certainly if, if, if a private business, commercial enterprise is gonna have a name on our facility, we're gonna to wanna to have some kind of contract in place that provides better specifics of what is the length of time, um, what is the ultimate donation, what does that look like um, year over year for however long they get the name on the, on the building. Who is Leslie Park named after? Leslie, but I can trust <laughs> No, actually, I was Dr. Dr. Leslie. Um, the, this, the, what the, our records indicate that there was a, a gentleman who's a doctor, Dr. Leslie, owned that parcel of land, I want to say in the 50s or so, um, and found that he was not able to develop or build anything on it, so he deeded it to the city at that time. Um, and, and again, it's a very small park, um, and, and at that time the city just decided to name it after him, Leslie Park. Uh, so, well, I mean, one thing we could do would be to recommend or actually pass a motion to move this on to the City Council for their review and approval. I'd like to make a motion to um, pass this document as is to City Council for approval. Uh, motion by Rousseau, seconded by Question. Any other discussion? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Nice job. Very thorough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item. Uh, Moving on to item 6B, update regarding fiscal year 24-25 capital improvement program budget. A report by Samantha White. <laughs> okay, um, so this item in front of you is a consideration of, of providing some feedback and input as we, as we formalize and prioritize our CIP recommendations to the city council. Um, uh, for some background, this commission hasn't reviewed this kind of document in quite a, quite a few years. I want to say it's, it's been almost 10 years probably. Um, but it is within the municipal code and kind of the duties of the commission to look at the budget. 
Um, so the goal of tonight's report is to share what, what is funded currently, what some of the projects that the, uh, not even just BPR, but really Public Works is working on that impact, that are kind of in that sphere of influence of the BPR Commission, and also look at what the staff recommendations are for next year, for fiscal year 24-25. Um, I, I, I also want to note that um, city staff are working towards uh, um, putting together a two-year budget um, that's new to the city. Um, we, we currently run on an annual budget, so we're now compiling what is a two-year. Um, so we're looking at both 24, 25, plus 25, 26. Um, so as, as city manager Amy Hall mentioned earlier, um, Certainly, if the commission wants to provide what is their most important projects, that's that's the goal. Um, we want to hear that. Um, I want to remind the commission that it's not necessarily because the commission says this is the most important project that it's going to get funded. Um, this is just another opportunity for both the public and the commission to provide their feedback on what they feel are priorities. Um, in the staff report, it lists kind of how typically things are prioritized, so that's pretty in detail, and that's part of our regular CIP process. Um, and we typically spend out, we, we see park, parks, uh, park, park projects funded from a couple of different accounts. Um, obviously, the largest one being the general fund. Um, and I can share, you know, typically we see, you know, this. I think this past year it was around eight and a half million. The year before that it was about nine and a half million. So that's typically where we see general fund um, projects landing at in totality. But that's not just exclusive to parks and rec, rec projects. Obviously, we share um, the general fund with a myriad of other departments and other larger projects. Whether that's um, things like you know Del Mar upgrades. Um, sidewalk repairs, marine safety, uh, building needs, anything like that um, could all fall under um, the general fund. The other account that the Parks and Rec Commission could look at and, and what BPR looks at as a department is the Parks Acquisition Fund. So you'll see in the staff report there's some noting of um, Parks Act projects. That fund balance tends to vary. Those are developer fees that are, anytime there's development or a, a permit pulled, those funds come from those fees. So it's, it's directly deposited into a Parks Act fund. Parks Acquisition funds funding typically needs to be used for new development um, or, or new facilities that are being built. So it's not a maintenance project, as a, a many of our, our CIP um, through general fund would be. Um, we also have a facility maintenance reserve account as well. Um, that is typically saved for things like playground replacements. Um, those are all, that's kind of the funding and makeup as it stands, and that's a very high level overview. Um, but again, the, we're not going to be working off of any specific budget. The goal is for the commission to prioritize. Um, with the, the note, as, as the city manager mentioned, public safety costs are rising, so we have to take that into consideration. And there are certainly projects like the Mariposa Bridge and the Beach Trail Stabilization. All of those things are so important, and we know that they're vital to the entire community. Um, so we have to take that into account as well with our funding. So um, I am happy to take questions if there are any. Um, I don't, I'm not sure, um, Chair Firestein, how you'd like me to go from here. Um, I will say, for consideration, whatever the commission does tonight, you might consider um, allowing your chair to meet directly with the mayor to review these items, as opposed to it being presented to the, the council as a whole, just to, 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 to uh, save the time of the council meetings as there's a lot on those agendas. I think it's so important that um, the mayor and council note that the commission did look at this. Um, you, you went out to the community, you heard from members of the public, and this was your recommendation. And that is really a great, um, a great thing for the chair at this commission to do. That would be my one um, note to consider as you guys go through this. Do we have some questions for Samantha on, on this item here? Mm -hmm. um, Samantha, on the budget that we have for 23-24, what happens to the money that we don't spend or don't start? So we know we had $800,000 in the pickleball, and we have uh, two projects, or one project, I'm sorry, the solar canopies, which hasn't started. 
and uh, the San Luis restaurant for 750 hasn't started. So that roughly means about a million seven five zero that hasn't started. What, what, and is that money? How is that money taken care of? Does it roll over? Do we get it? Does the city put it back in the general fund? Those projects that haven't started are going to be recommended for carryovers, so they would be rolled over um, and picked up at the start of the next fiscal year. But would they be charged to the, our new capital improvement budget, or would they be still no. closed? So they would still be charged against the old capital. Correct. Budget. Okay. Now I also have a, I ran a total of our of the ones that we presented with the balance values that we showed. So the ones in your list is comes out to four million eight hundred thousand, um, which is a little bit on the high side for what. That's why I was asking the question of Andy to get some kind of an idea because you really have to run the totals. I mean I know there's all these other in the weeds kind of considerations, but so if we're at four million. Okay, now maybe we could find, or at least I think we can find a million four million four fifty that we might be able to take out of that budget, but that would reduce us down to one of two eight or two seven. I have taken the opportunity though, because this is a priority thing. I've taken the opportunity to make some suggestions, perhaps in lieu of um, some of the other opportunities that we have. And uh, I have this on, I have this on, uh, I mean, I have it on a handout that I gave to you all. So my question would be, or my recommendation would be, um, we know that we're probably going to have to hit four million, according to Andy, between three and four million. I mean, that's a realistic number. We had six million last year. And we're going to roll over a uh, million seven fifty. So that's, that takes care of that. Now that million seven fifty is already in the in the account, right? We don't have to worry about funding that. Sam, do we have to worry about funding the million seven five zero? The money that we're rolling over. No, from, that's funded. Those are those are considered um, ongoing projects. Okay, so, so they're funded. It would be that's great. Over, yes. Oh, that's good. Um, number solar canopies in the parking lot. Is that possible to move that to another application? In other words, solar canopies, I mean, in my experience, there's some problems. I don't think that's our jurisdiction to decide. So what I can share with you is... This. Well, no, if we can, maybe we can't because it's already been approved. So... But we can, I think we can. Somebody correct me. I think we can change the priorities on the other stuff. What I, I want to note that the design for the current fiscal year of 23 24, it's not a million, it's a hundred thousand. That should, there should be one last zero there. That's the design. We expect, and this is just purely an estimate, that the installation for those two parks could be upwards of a million and a half to two million dollars. Um, the recommendation from staff, and this, we just had a meeting on this this morning, is to kick that project out to 25, 26, um, and start to acquire some grant funding, um, or federal funding, or other funds, because I, I collectively staff agree that there's a lot of funding out there for solar projects and EV stations, all of those things. Um, so I don't think that that's actually going to hit the general fund at that dollar value, but also acknowledging staff workloads. We're going to try to do the design in 24, 25, and then by that time we should have a better estimate and then be able to seek grant funding. So the recommendation is to move that project out of here. Perfect. For the peer underpass, is peer pride involved in any of that? Yes, um, they are involved in, uh, they're considered a stakeholder um, in participating in the design of it. They're also going to be contributing um, funding towards it. They haven't um, confirmed an amount of what they're looking to fund, but um, Peer Pride typically always come, comes forward. Okay. To so the 300 would be what we would give to towards the project. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And again, it's it's likely that that project would come in under budget as well. So that, uh, can I ask why um, 
So the big project at Steed for pickleball, uh, I don't see an line item for that here. Um, Two million. I thought that was for the temporary. That the temporary. Oh, that's the temporary. Yeah. 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 So, should something be in here for that? So at this point, um, we're not even, we're not even done with the design of those twenty four courts, and I think that um, based on feedback from the city council and the city manager, we're going to look to try to secure funding from private sources, whether that's through sponsorships or or partnerships. Um, it the. The general consensus is that um, there's a better way to fund a $11 million pickleball facility, and it's not going to be through the general fund at this time. That could change in the future, but again, given the priorities for this year and next year, pickleball did not land on that list compared to some of those other larger projects. And, and let me ask you your opinion of the question about the Mariposa Bridge. I always think of the entire beach trail as kind of being Beaches, Parks and Rec being involved there. So if, if we can get an insurance company to pay that bill, great. But in the meantime, should something be on this list to kind of recognize that could be a big cost for the city? Yes, um, absolutely. The Mariposa Bridge needs to be looked at. It needs to be funded. It needs to be addressed. Um, I think that that will be a large conversation for CIP. And I'm going to try to take a quick peek through my list because I know we talked about it this morning. Um, I know it's a lot of money. <laughs> so, right now they're recommending. One second. It is listed. Um, engineering and maintenance put it into the project list it looks like it's going to have to go you know the, the design of the bridge has to be redone um, what we've done in the past or what existed before is likely not to survive most of it hasn't survived and um, so they're, they're going to need to do some design work on it and that's estimated at um, it looks like three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars and then uh, it will be in the at least the eight to ten million dollars, depending on what the design looks like, and again, that's got to be a big collaboration um, with a lot of different agencies involved. So, um, staff are recommending um, it's, it's funding for at least the design in the coming year, and then we'll have to look at um, construction funding in the future. In your opinion, does that need to go on this list or, or not? I certainly think it should. Yeah, okay. but there, I have no issue with that. Okay. If, I don't, don't quote me on the design cost estimate, but I can take the direction of giving you a better estimate. So I certainly agree with the high priority of the community center work repair. Given what we've been through this last <laughs> few months. And yeah, I mean, it's just going to lead to more and more damage to the community center if we might get that. Uh, definitely on it. And agree with the high priority on that one. Um, what is the Meadows at Vista Hermosa Design and Construction? What is that? Great question. Um, <laughs> the Meadows is the space where the carnival is held every year. Um, we've coined the Meadows because it's a meadow mix that's on the ground. Um, for background for the commission, Vista Hermosa Sports Park is a fully planned park intended to be done in a couple of phases. When we opened the park in 2012, um, there wasn't an original intention to finish the soccer fields, um, which is called the Meadows. Um, but at that time, um, the city council and city leadership were concerned about the ongoing costs of maintenance um, and wanted to take a really conservative approach fiscally to how that, that facility was constructed and rolled out. So they decided, let's, let's hold off on developing the Meadows component which again is supposed to be a multi-purpose field area. Um, and that allowed for some cost savings at that time. Um, and we've been able to use that park now and that space for um, 10 plus years to some capacity for special events and, and, and all of those things. Um, but it, based on what we're seeing in field usage, it's time. We, we need um, soccer fields, football fields. We need multi-purpose fields. Um, so the construction of that, design and construction, is just exactly that. 
is to finalize the development of the space. Um, right now, it exists with full field lights and everything. It's fully lit, so there's a lot of infrastructure there. Um, but it doesn't have, um, a, it's not maintained at a sports field uh, level or condition. Um, there's limited ADA access, there's no bleachers, there's no shade. Um, all of those things don't exist. So it's kind of a shell in a sense. Um, so the design and construction project would complete that. It would add all of those elements in and finish that phase of the sports park. Um, that type of project can be funded through the Parks Acquisition Fund. Um, so I think it was mentioned earlier, uh, you know, our, our temporary pickleball courts were $1.2 million. We had um, originally budgeted $2 million for pickleball in general. Um, because we're not going to be using that towards pickleball, we now have some level of savings in that sense. So um, therefore, this Meadows project, um, I think, serves a really big factor of the community. Kind of related, I was going to ask commissioners if they ever want to take a field trip maybe to the top five parks? Because I just happen to be at Vista Hermosa and Courtney's Castle, going to Steed and seeing what we're talking about and going as a group on a field trip type thing. Obviously with 24 parks, we can't do them all. But as you see line items here, maybe there's five or six parks, we could go on a field trip on a Friday maybe. That was just use the trolley or something like that. That was a suggestion I was going to make later tonight. So we I think that was a great idea. Us. We do. We have to know what we're doing. Well, that way you can see what you're dealing with. It's one thing to have it on paper and money, but it's another thing to be at the field. Obviously, I'm in a soccer uniform, so that's why I was at Vista Hermosa. Um, that was a suggestion I was going to make later. I just don't know when it's appropriate. What happens to the carnival if that place, if that portion is developed? <laughs> <laughs> Or is that another topic um, for something? I, I think that I think the car, the carnival can still exist. Um, there's plenty of cities that well, Maine is the hate me for saying that, but uh, there's plenty of cities that have spaces that are um, the home to really important community events, and it ruins the grass. It just happens. Um, and as, I think as long as the city and in partnership with the Friends Foundation plans and prepares that the carnival's coming into town, we know it's going to ruin the grass. It's going to take 30 days to repair it. The fields are going to stay closed. This is how much money it takes to, to repair it. As long as we prepare and plan accordingly, we can overcome anything. Grass can be repaired. We know that. Um, and I think the Friends are a, a good enough partner that um, it, for the Friends, I, mean, I can't speak for them, but my sense is that Yes, they, they want to use it as a fundraising tool, the carnival, but it's also just as much a fundraising tool as it, as it is a community event. Um, and that is absolutely their priority as well. So our goal would be to continue hosting the carnival there, um, but I, I, because I don't really see another space, um, to be quite honest with the commission. Um, but I don't want a four-day event to be the reason why we don't develop a space either. I, that would not be my best recommendation. Question on, yeah. um, Samantha, so on the on the capex or the capex budget that you prepared, which totals out about four million bucks, could you tell me how critical these three projects are: the Talega playground, the skateboard enhancements, and the solar canopy? So okay. the playgrounds are funded through the facilities maintenance reserve, and it is it is not advisable to continue to push that project um, based on our regular inspections of the playground. Um, Talega Park and Forster Ranch um, playgrounds both need, they need to be replaced. Um, they were supposed to be replaced last year and um, we, we punted them and I think the time is of the essence at this point. Um, whether that's the playground equipment or some of the surfacing, our maintenance public works team is um, repairing as quickly as they can, but a lot of the equipment is breaking, um, and it's it's becoming costly to continue to repair it. How about the skateboard enhancements? I also think those are important. Again, that would be um, some funding that we could use from the Parks Act Fund. Um, whether that's, um, you know, the easiest route would be to expand a portion of our existing skate park. There's some viable area and space um, between both the pickleball area and the existing skate court that I think some additional features can be added. 
um, and an above ground build. I, I wouldn't recommend uh, anything other than that. I think above ground is cost effective and it gets um, some new features for, for the skateboard community and, and kind of a street style skate setup, if you will. So is it possible to take some of that skateboard above ground and move it into local parks where the kids can access it as opposed to going up Pico to the bottom? Anything's possible. Um, the, the easiest path is to expand our existing skate park because we've already done a lot of work. We've established a skate park. It's already in the master plan. We've already done the environmental on it. Um, it, adding skateboard features in any other park is going to trigger a master plan amendment as well as doing the, the CEQA findings on it. Also. So the amendment would have to be made to the master plan for STEED and mm -hmm. basically remove that element and then move it over to local park? No, STEED is already done. STEED Park is already, the master plan already allows for skateboarding as a use and the environmental is done on it. Any other park, we would have to amend that site-specific master plan and also perform the environmental analysis. What about the skate feature in San Borgonio? That was never formally approved or adopted by the city council. But it's still we kind of there. Correct. We didn't finish the environmental on it. And finally, the solar canopy, uh, which is, where is that solar canopy? Oh, it's over the top. You're saying that's not a million bucks? The design is not. We estimate the design of the canopy is to be around 100 grand. Okay. The construction and installation will probably be 1.5 to 2 million between the two park sites because they're pretty large parking lots. Now, um, is that coming out? Of, is that would that be in this budget for funding? For million the million. The hundred. The hundred grand is already budgeted for. The million is is being suggested <laughs> to to budget in 25, 26. So again, that's, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. again, that's with the want to, to acquire grant funding. Is there a target to switch to grant funding? That's not a big fan, that's a problem. Um, what would that what would that energy be used for, just out of curiosity? We've got a bunch of these proposed at various parks. Where's that electricity going to go? So, Mr. Hermosa is going to be used to support the electricity at the aquatic center, um, which we are on. We, we're a big user of the energy at the aquatic center with the, with the pools. Um, we currently have solar panels at the aquatic center on the ground um, where the gymnasium is planned for. Um, they are not very large, so they don't do much to offset the cost, although there is some cost savings in energy. Um, Steve Park, same thing. That you know, there's there's costs with field lights. There's costs with um, operating that facility in general, um, and that was the goal was again to offset our energy costs. Um, the other element is when you design a parking lot, and, and Steve Park is expected to be expanded if if and when um, the rest of the plan goes through for development. Um, we would need to have shade in the parking lot. So in lieu of trees. We would look at putting in um, the solar canopy and structure, similar to what you see at the high school. So let me let me suggest one thing we could do would be to take the items. Um, I'm looking at the staff report, bottom of page three, top of page four, uh, all the items that are identified as high priority on the right. Um, and to that list, I would add uh, some kind of plug number for the Mariposa Bridge so in design or something, just to make sure we get it on the list. Um, and and pass a motion to say that these are our, our top priority items. Rob, did you want to add to that to have you speak to the mayor directly? Uh, I'm fine with that. If you would like me to. But isn't the total a little bit? Set, uh, isn't it Andy I, basically four million? That I would be the outside. I haven't added it up, but I did. It's four million for all high priority. For the whole thing. For so the whole. Has anybody added just the high priority items? Yeah. So yeah. There's only one. There's only, I only have solar. The solar canopy. Yeah, the media. Right, but all the rest of them are eight. Well, shade structure with Christmas is usually for the And then, it's a little under the four million. Yeah, the high priority. We're only discussing high priority items. Yeah. Okay, well then you take it a million off and you're at three. Correct. Right. So 
So, Ralph, did you want a motion that again? Uh, I would be happy to make a motion. This was the last time to make a motion, but I would be happy to make a motion. Um, I move that uh, the commission identify the items on page three and four of the staff report that are identified as high priority items and add a a number for the Mariposa Bridge Repair to that list and identify those as the Commission's high priority items. I second. A motion by Firestein, second by Weinstein. Any comments, thoughts? I added that it's 2.96 million as a high priority with nothing allotted for Mariposa Bridge. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Samantha, right. so let me ask you, is that, is that what we need to do on this item? Or is there something else that we should do? No, you guys are, that's great. Thank you. Communications, uh, Beaches, Parks, and Recreation Director Report. And um, for that, we turn to Samantha White. <laughs> One day I'm going to get staff, don't worry. <laughs> um, master plan update for, for Steve Park. So, um, this is most likely, um, I'll follow up on the, uh, the pickleball item. I know the commission reviewed the 24 core design. Um, we are just in the early phases of completing the environmental update for the 24 courts. Um, originally, the environmental approved just 16 courts. So we've got to go back and update that environmental analysis and those findings. So we're, we're working on that. Um, we are also working with um, one of the businesses in the area who's interested in helping to um, fund some of the development of that space. Um, closest to their business, um, that is kind of a public-private benefit, if you will. Um, so we're working with that business as well to see how that can pan out. Um, and then I am continuing to work closely with, with the pickleball community to talk about how funding looks for the future, again, based on our prior CIP discussion that we just had. Um, we we want to look at all the different avenues to fund that space um, outside of the general fund as an option. Um, and that's mostly the update on, on Steve Park. Are there any questions on that? Yes. So do the pickleball people have the notion that this facility would be private for, at their discretion, which is what they're doing with the temporary courts? You determine that the temporary courts are their championship courts, limiting public access, and then they're sending everybody over to um, San Gregorio, which has its own an issue there too. I, I can't speak for the pickleball community. I can't say that um, the reports I'm receiving in my office here is about the use of the, the pickleball courts at State Park are a little disheartening. Um, I've heard the same thing, that there's some folks that use those courts that um, are pretty aggressive and don't allow some individuals to use the courts at all. Um, my team and I are analyzing a better method of play of how, it, how we should manage those courts up there, whether that's by level of play, um, you know, if you're a 2.5 player, this is where you should go. Um, I'll be honest with the commission, this isn't something that we typically have to deal with in other sports facilities. People can usually get along, um, and we're not seeing that as much as we do in other spaces. So. Um, we're assessing it. We're going to have to be updating some of our signage, and it might we might need to end up putting some staff out there to help um, navigate and monitor um, what sounds like some pretty pretty tense scenarios that have played out. Um, the facility as a whole is really busy. I hear that there's one to two hour wait times on the weekends, which is great to hear. You know, we want to build facilities that are needed and used, um, but the opposite end of that is bad behavior. 
Um, so that's something that, um, again, I'm, I'm working through and trying to figure out how do we educate adults on playing nicely together. Um, <laughs> and that's a challenge. Um, well, you just establish, I mean, you just establish a protocol for the courts that basically they're public courts and, you know, whoever comes and rackets the court appropriately gets the court. I mean, that's the way it was, at, kind of the way it was at San Gregorio. And, and we're not doing anything different at Steve than we were at San Gregorio. Um, they are. They okay. are. Mm -hmm. The players have decided to change the rules. So, um, unfortunately, they're not respecting each other, um, and, and that's, a, that's, that's where I have to step in, or my staff or other city staff have to step in to um, provide that authority. Hence the field trip to Steve. Well, if they're acting like this on these temporary courts, I can only imagine how they're going to act when they get the full facility. I mean, why don't we just let them have a, a private record? Thing? And I, I do want to say, it's not all the pickleball players. They're, uh, many of them are wonderful people. Um, I, I think it's a few bad actors in the group, but uh, unfortunately, that's who tends to ruin a good thing. So, uh, Director Wiley, would a reservation uh, system or protocol potentially solve this issue, do you believe? Yeah, without getting too further into discussion um, and a very high level, and then I think we should probably wrap up our pickleball conversation, um, staff were directed by council in November to come back with a status update that's at the six month mark. Um, that was when they reopened San Gregorio. So that is very near on the horizon, and part of that conversation could include what, what does it look like to do reservations? Now, um, I'll be very honest, sometimes reservations come with charging a fee, even if it's a nominal fee, just like you see for the pool use, even if it's $2, um, that, that typically comes with the reservation. So we're looking at all angles uh, ahead of coming back to council for a debrief on that. Great. I, I'd like to note, um, my neighbor is a very big uh, pickleball fanatic, and she said that um, she would be more than happy and willing to, to pay for reservations because um, she said sometimes she could wait, you know, hours to play. Looks like a HOA has a couple of people ball courts and they have a couple of rooms system that works out really well for, you know, the two walking courts that they have. <laughs> mm. Are there any other questions on the master plan and I can, I can move into Recreation, yeah, I have a quick question. When you update it, can you update the priorities? Can you do that kind of thing in the in the context? Because the priorities are all five, six years old, and they really aren't relevant. You know the priority list? Yes. Um, you're referring to the 2018 master plan. Correct. That, that document. Pickleball is at the bottom of the priority list. Right. Um, and and that is that is what is typical of a master plan. Um, it's kind of a time and a place, and as, as much as a master plan hopes to be a 10 to 15 year outlook, um, sometimes there's trends and there's just booms in certain areas that are unexpected, and pickleball came up the tail end of that. Um, but certainly what I what I will do is circulate that priority list that you're referring to, so the whole commission's aware of it. It is online as well, um, but so you guys can see what were the priorities then. Um, that same master plan um, gave us a, a, a goal and a marker on expanding trails, adding the community center, expanding parks. All of those were added in there, um, and so I, I'll, I'll circulate that to the group. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'll move on. Um, just a couple of updates. I, I mentioned um, I wanted to go over a couple things that commission has reviewed that went to council. Um, we are in the process of finalizing some of the details for the North Beach Playground. Um, we did have quite a bit of sand loss there, unfortunately, through the storm last week, so we're kind of assessing that um, and, and trying to figure out what is the best plan forward. Um, it looks like the playground that was proposed for approval still would have been fine in the space, but we just want to make sure that we're doing things right. Um, ahead of getting into something that might not have been the best idea. So we're ironing out those details, and once um, staff feel confident that it's the right plan to go forward, we'll take a contract to council for approval. Um, and then I'm also, just a quick update on the mini golf item. I know this commission reviewed this a while ago. Um, the city manager and I are still going through negotiations with Salty Turf. 
things are going very well. We hope to have an agreement in place with Sticky Turf in the next couple of weeks here um, by hopefully no later than mid-March that will then allow them to go forward. Um, but I know that there's a lot of community interest and excitement surrounding that as well. Um, and I think that is it, but if there's something I missed that the commission looked at, I'm happy to answer questions if there are any. Thank you. Next item, 8A, subcommittee reports, funding and sponsorship subcommittee. Uh, let me just give you a, a real quick on that. And then, um, Commissioner Johnson, and we're still going to add anything. But uh, really, our, our last few meetings were focused on putting together the policy that we just approved a few minutes ago. So I don't know if we have any really anything more to add. Um, I know we want to get back and talk about, you know, what's the possibility of actually generating some um, funding from, from companies or individuals or whatever. I know that that will be our next thing to kind of jump back onto. But the last few meetings have been focused on developing this policy. Anything else? Um, yeah, so uh, we are looking forward to having uh, Commissioner Orso join us. Um, and our first uh, meeting with the three of us together will be next Tuesday, um, February 20th at 4 p.m. Okay. The Beautify St. Clemente Subcommittee. Who would like to talk to that? I had a bit of a roadblock. I met with um, Samantha to find out what it was about, to find out that Commissioner Johnson had suggested it, to not having the emails or connections for Commissioner Grace. So unfortunately, we haven't had a meeting yet, um, but yeah. we will. Yeah, so our first meeting will be this month, and we look forward to providing an update. Uh, Okay. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Now we are on 8B. I was from Commissioners Pure Pride. Uh, Pure Pride had uh, the their their monthly meeting last night. They are looking forward to getting some work done at the underpass um, as you enter the, as you move from Avenue Victoria to the pier, um, particularly drainage there and uh, some better lighting and some landscaping. That's kind of the project that they would like to make some progress on this year. Uh, the next meeting will be a two-hour kind of deep dive into kind of overall or long-term goals of the uh, foundation. I think that's it. Samantha, do you have anything else on the you would like to add? Okay. Public affairs. Mr. Question. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, our senator doesn't seem to be very responsive to uh, what, the, what we're interested in in South County. But, um, uh, Davies is excellent. There's two items that are going to come out of committee. One of them is AB 2124, and that is um, is uh, to have some. There's some federal money involved in that, encouraging or providing opportunities for at-risk children to have swimming lessons. So that, that'll probably fly through. I can imagine because there's federal money involved in it. The other um, item that's going through a committee, or going to committee, is um, AB uh, 1848. This is um, it basically a law enforcement uh, ordinance that basically increases the penalties for fentanyl sales anywhere near where there could possibly be children, which includes parks, churches, elementary schools, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, from our perspective, those are the only two uh, right now that are going into committee. And the way this, way Sacramento works is it goes to committee, and then the committee gives it to the committee they think is responsible for it, and then it comes out of committee potentially. Some things die in committee, and then it goes you know goes to the assembly floor. There's a little bit of a process involved in there. There's a thing called the legislative council, and they make an adjustment. Or they make a, uh, a, a, a um, an assessment of uh, the proposed legislation, and they have to give it pro and con in terms of the budget and so forth and so on. So that's what's happening. So that will all right now they're doing what they call their two-year um, legislation, which is things that were basically passed out of committee but failed on the floor. They get an opportunity to bring it back on the floor. 
I didn't get, I didn't see that there was anything of any interest to us. Um, that's next week, and then next week they start soliciting all of the, these bills are going to committee. So you know the the, the session just started. So, and um, uh, Davies, uh, chief of staff, who I've been dealing with, is really excellent, and he'll I put a, a set a line of communication with him. Anything that comes up, uh, you know, get, let us know. The other thing. I mentioned to him, and he's going to check on it. It doesn't appear that there is anybody from Orange County, let alone South Orange County, on the State Parks and Recreation Commission. Everybody's from Northern California. And so I said, could he find out, because we have two state parks you know, bookending our community, right? So I said, that's very interesting. I, I looked up the commissions, you know, the, the body of the commission, I think it takes nine, and they've got five currently, and they're all Northern California. So I just said, well, you know, let's take a look. So that's the nice thing about having a relationship with your legislator because he's going to go nose around and find out what the story is. They have four open positions, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess they do. I mean, it's amazing. Nice. And there was nobody from Orange County at all on the commission. When you're talking about um, the chief of staff for Davis, are you talking about Assemblywoman Lori Davies? Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah, her okay. chief of staff, her work is his name, E R W. Never spell it. Okay. Yeah, she's um, very responsive. She does, although our city councilman, Mr. Duncan, is now running, I guess, for that position. Yes. What? Mm -hmm. well, I don't know. Not well, there you go. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Next item is 53 proposed agenda items. Does anybody have any proposed agenda items for our next meeting? Yeah, I, um, we don't have any. The pickleball thing has basically showcased the fact that there's a demand for recreation for older people. A pickleball you know, has an aspect to it, but there's nothing, if you think about it, uh, there is nothing for older people to do in terms of any kind of competitive recreation in this city. Now everybody knows, or the people who have kind of been around know that I'm a big fan of converting the lawn bowling facility, which I was involved in three years ago, and converting that into a bocce ball facility. Um, my interest in that is, is that it, it, it lays out perfectly, it lays out to be a tournament. But anyway, the point that's the point being that uh, and there's another thing that the elderly people like to do, and that's I work out at the beach. And we have our, our, our beach exercise equipment is a little, uh, how should I say, getting a little shabby. And I think that's something that we should try to encourage. I know we're trying to put exercise equipment in the parks, but I think putting it down on the beach. Quick, quick question, isn't that on the sea? I think it's the exercise equipment at North Beach. On the, sea, on the CFP plant? I thought I saw We it. are looking to replace the exercise equipment at Port of Lane. That's, that is their funding available for that. So what's your agenda item? Geriatric. Well, it could be geriatric, yeah, geriatric and special aid kids. But I mean, it's it's yeah that kind of thing. We don't have anything like that. I mean, literally, you either play golf or now you can play pickleball. But how did you want to enlist the agenda item? Well, I think what we should do is maybe solicit Samantha to try to give us some. She's a parks and recreation person to give us some ideas about other other recreational opportunities for older for the older citizens. You know, not soccer, not basketball, you know. And maybe that's one or two things. I mean, we could, she could bring us a report on that, and uh, we could think about it or review it. So I had one um, that I, I'm not sure how this works. It's the open space, single tracks for biking. Um, Someone has brought this to my attention a few times and I <laughs> said I would bring it up. But I don't know how the trails are cleared out or how they're maintained. Or um, Apparently they said that as private citizens they go out and clean these trails after they've grown over and have to do it on their own. And maybe potentially looking at some other, what do you call it, um, 
decompose natural granite or something like the beach trail that we have? You know, is there other options where these things wouldn't grow over? I don't know who maintains those trails or if we have anybody that does or if that's even something that's been discussed in the past because we do, you know, tout that we have a lot of trails here. And if they're not cleaned up and people can't get through, you know, walking or mountain biking, you know, I, I don't know if there's something in, in place that they're supposed to be out there cleaning them or they're just allowed to grow over or I don't know. I don't know a lot of hikers going up there and doing it on their own. Yeah. What, the city has a has a trail program. We, we have several miles of trails that are maintained um, under a contract. I think what you're referring to is goat paths that individuals have decided to cut through. Um, and it's very typical. We see that often. Um, we need more trails. We should extend and expand our trail system. I full heartedly agree with that. Um, I know that's a need and a want. Um, that takes a little bit of planning um, and and also some funding because we need to look at what is the cost to now start to maintain it. Even if it's volunteers, well, volunteers are wonderful, but they're not necessarily a commitment to continue to maintain a space. Um, so I, I don't want to get too much into discussion, uh, but I, I can give you some more details offline. Um, the pump track component is something that's uh, approved through the Steve Park Master Plan, and I'm working with a local group to, to potentially look at um, getting some funding to make that happen as well. We have a little bit of a struggle because there's all, the dog park is currently there, so we've got to work through some of the, those logistics, but I think um, getting a dog park online and some other sites, that's council direction, that alleviate that obstacle. Okay. Well, it sounds like it's on your radar, so I won't put it as an agenda item, but I just wanted to bring it up and see if something was at least being thought about. Yeah, I, I will just say, say that um, we can't encourage folks to go off the trail as it's designated. Um, and so we, we don't advertise trails unless they are a city trail that's part of our trail master plan and maintained as a trail pathway. And those are currently maintained like they should be. Okay. Yes. So, okay, what, is, um, what is the what is the idea with the city in terms of electrification of all the uh, maintenance equipment for the parks? I just saw a statistic that the Wee Whacker uh, produces enough carbon for an 1100 mile trip in a car. So I, that is not within my department. That's definitely a public works question. Um, I can say that there's a want um, by the city council and the public to look at the city establishing a climate action plan that would then direct um, the conversion of those types of units and, and vehicles if that's the case. Um, I, you know, I, I can't speak for public works and how they manage that. Most of that is all managed by contract. Um, and, you know, they did switch over to electric leaf blowers. They moved that direction. That's by, by code and ordinance. Um, but everything else, I, I can't speak to. The city is currently working towards um, complying with the 2030 requirement of, of all old vehicles going to electric. So we're looking at that through our fleet maintenance replacement program. Um, and then anything else would want, they would want to have considered for the climate action plan in this direction, is my understanding. So uh, one thing I was going to bring up here in terms of future agenda items was I think the one thing on our work plan, which I pulled out this morning for clear real quick, that we don't have something in work is the item about um, evaluate site and spaces to install work equipment on beaches. So maybe that's something we can roll together with what you were just thinking about, Ed, and kind of bring that forward as an agenda item for next week. Mm -hmm. how, we, how we make progress on this as well as some of the things that you were talking about too. Yeah, there's a real demand for it. Any other agenda item ideas? My only question was if we want to consider a field trip to qualify parks oh, using right. a trolley car. It doesn't have to be an agenda item, it's just something to talk yeah. about. We just have to be careful about brown stuff. But 
so we couldn't all go unless it was a, a notice meeting. Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking what Sherry and I did on the trolley through the, the leadership class of living at the same time. Yeah, we did that at the beginning of two years ago when the new commissioners came along mm -hmm. to the five master plan parks. Well, I, I think it's a terrific idea. I mean, what can we just, I mean, can several of us just go where we're not violating the Brown Act? We just it's arrange three, it. Three or more. Yeah. No, you have we do two to, trips? Of, yeah, you have yeah, to three go or more, right? Three. 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 Or make it a special three. meeting. Do we have to notice it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the possibility of a special meeting? We yeah, should well, do that mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. We should visit all the parks Sorry. just as a commission yeah. anyway. That's, That's our job. Oh, well. Oh, all 26. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the, the trolley is um, a little difficult. There's some. You are you looking if you're looking to take it off of its regular route? There's that public impact. Um, if you're looking to take it when it's not typically in service, there's a cost to that. You just go individually or go kind of carpool and just drive around. You know, there's 20, what, 25 of them. 25 cars. 24. Yes. <laughs> well, that would be several trips, I think, realistically. What's a good thing to do? I'm just trying to figure out how we do that. Yeah, I think the ones the that are on our, agenda, our list here would yeah, be the high priority, priority ones, not all 26. Or, yeah. No, the most you could do is four or five. That's why I was thinking Steve Withers, Pickleball. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Hermosa, and Portis Castle is also, and San Gregorio are the top three that I thought of. Yeah. So, I mean, if we could do a special meeting and just carpool, I think that would work too. It's not like it's, they're very far away. <laughs> no, it's very so good. Is, is that possible to do? I mean, if we have a meeting, don't we have to allow for some? How, how about, um, how about the, the commission make a motion in a second and then vote on um, allowing the chair and I to figure out how we can develop an opportunity for commissioners to tour the parks? So Sorry. Let's see. Moved by question, seconded by Johnson. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, there you go. Unanimous. Thank you. Good idea. One item left on our agenda. Is that motion to close the meeting? I, I have a quick announcement, if I may. All right, it's great. Um, so this, um, the first Saturday of March, which is Saturday, March 2nd, uh, Orange County's biggest outdoor vegan market is coming to our wonderful city. So it will feature over 40 vendors, um, a s impressive selection of great food, drinks, burgers, donuts, tacos, uh, nachos, international food, everything you guys can imagine. Um, it's put on by a vegan uh, food pop-up, and they've been working really closely um, with the North, North Beach Community Association. So I would like to invite everyone out. It's going to be a, a great time. It's, so it's going to be at the North Beach uh, parking lot between Beach Hut Deli and Landers. So yeah, that, that the Ernesto yeah, restaurant. Yeah. Um, and it's scheduled for the first Saturday of every month for the next few months also. Uh, oh, so it'd be great to see everyone there. And lastly, um, they're offering a free uh, vendor boost to local nonprofits. So if you guys know of anyone, uh, there's going to be more than 40 vendors there. Uh, reach out to me, and I'll connect you with, with them. Any kind of nonprofit? Yeah, any any uh, local nonprofit, correct? Uh, yeah, please, please, we encourage it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so you okay. <laughs> yeah, we have a, we, we have an emotion, a motion, a second to adjourn. No. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Motion by Weinstein, seconded by Rousseau to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have Both. to state when you adjourn it too? Oh. Maybe.
don't know about the official. That's okay. Special meetings, you know, just a journey to regular. To a, okay, we're adjourning to a regular meeting. Uh, let's see, on April 9th. Right here at 6 p.m. Thank you.